Welcome to the Bladed Tech Channel's 49th edition of the Tesla and SpaceX Redux. We are reviewing the milestones that occurred on each day in the week of August 23rd through August 29th in the history of Tesla, SpaceX, Starlink, The Boring Company, and Elon Musk's other various business ventures. August 23rd, 2014. The Grasshopper F9R Dev-1, the second and final variant of the Grasshopper test series of the Falcon 9 rocket, was destroyed shortly after its launch from SpaceX's McGregor Engineering Facility near this date. The loss occurred following a flight anomaly that began to take the prototype craft off of its planned flight path. There were no injuries. A later investigation revealed that a black sensor was the cause of the flight anomaly. The sensor had no backup in the prototype F9R Dev-1 vehicle, but would have had a redundant backup in a flight version of the Falcon 9 booster. SpaceX finally succeeded in landing a production vertical landing rocket on land using an operational Falcon 9 on December 21, 2015. By May 27, 2016, SpaceX had followed its achievement on land by successfully completing three first stage landings on a drone ship at sea. August 24, 2017. The foremost Sat-5 satellite was lifted to orbit on a Falcon 9 FT rocket, Booster 1038, from the Vandenberg Air Force Base's Launch Complex 4E on this date. The booster successfully returned to a drone ship. Foremost Sat-5 was an Earth observation satellite developed and constructed by Taiwan. The satellite was significantly under the rocket maximum payload as a spaceflight industry's Sherpa space tug scheduled for the flight had been removed from the cargo manifest. This led analysts to speculate that with discounts offered to NSPO due to launch delays, SpaceX lost money on the mission. August 25th, 2018. Elon Musk tweeted a eulogy on this date, quote, The world lost a great man in John McCain. He was an honorable, kind, brave, and fundamentally decent human being. If only there were more such people in the world. Senator McCain had just died on that day. He had been the United States Senator for Arizona from 1987 until his death. He previously served two terms in the United States House of Representatives and was the Republican nominee for President of the United States in the 2008 election, which he lost to Barack Obama. McCain was also a retired naval aviator. His father and grandfather were four-star admirals. His career was effectively cut short by his capture by the North Vietnamese during the Vietnam War after being shot down in 1967. His injuries were so severe, he should have died. Not only did he live, he survived months of several beatings a day until signing a confession, and then survived five years of thrice-weekly beatings in captivity until being released with a hundred other POWs in 1973. His experience gave him permanent disabilities and he ultimately left the Navy at the rank of captain. McCain was a strong supporter of the U.S. space program, although his senatorial committee assignments did not involve direct oversight of NASA and his home state of Arizona had little interaction with the agency's activities. During his presidential campaign, the senator committed to, quote, review and explore all options to ensure U.S. access to space by minimizing the gap between the termination of the space shuttle and the availability of its replacement vehicle. SpaceX's eventual success was brought about by NASA's commercial crew program to develop that replacement. The company designed, built, and flew the Dragon spacecraft nine years after the retirement of the shuttle fleet. August 26, 2018, Air Force General Carlton Everhart, then commander of the Air Mobility Command, requested SpaceX in Virgin Orbit near this date to study the possibility of Earth-to-Earth -Earth logistics services by the Starship spacecraft and the Launcher 1 air-to-space vehicle. Blue Origin was slated to be later visited by the General as well. He said, quote, SpaceX executives tell me that they can go around the globe in 30 minutes with a Starship. Think about this. 30 minutes, 150 metric tons, less than the cost of performing the same mission with the C-5 Galaxy transport aircraft. 
It would also take the Air Mobility Command's aircraft anywhere from 8 to 10 hours to get to the other side of the world. That makes space transportation an attractive proposition if the command can figure out the logistics of how to send, receive, and protect cargo coming and going from space. Gwyn Shotwell, SpaceX's President and Chief Operating Officer, promised Everhart that such missions could be possible when the Starship starts flying in the early 2020s. The general defended his interest in space transportation by saying, quote, If we don't do this and we just stay in the air domain, Air Mobility Command is going to become irrelevant. He was probably right to be concerned. The U.S. Space Force Service Branch was established on December 20th of 2019. Spaceborne logistics are likely to be eventually absorbed sometime in the future by the Space Force, possibly leaving the Air Mobility Command behind. August 27, 2019, SpaceX's Starhopper test rocket executed its second and final test hop from the company's Boca Chica Starbase on this date. The craft ascended to 490 feet and landed 330 feet from the launch pad, demonstrating the first use of the Raptor engine in a real flight. The Starhopper was retired shortly thereafter. It was designed to be a low-altitude Starship prototype and was the first prototype of the Starship program to be built. Starhopper was not a full-height rocket, as it didn't include header tanks, and the nose cone, first intended for the vehicle, was destroyed due to high winds and was replaced by a smaller dome. Testing of the craft began in March of 2019. Following tests, Starhopper was retired and repurposed as a water tank and equipment mount near the entrance of the launch site. Equipment currently stalled on it include cameras, lights, loudspeakers, and radar. August 28, 2019, Chinese billionaire Jack Ma and American billionaire Elon Musk squared off against each other in a joint interview at the World Artificial Intelligence Conference in Shanghai near this date. The discussion broached a number of topics, including that of artificial intelligence, but it was the debate over Mars that raised eyebrows. Musk said, quote, I think it's important for us to take the set of actions that are most likely to continue consciousness into the future. One of those actions is to become a multiplanetary species or ensure that life is multiplanetary. There's a probability at a certain point that some either external force or some internal unforced error causes civilization to be destroyed or sufficiently impaired. This is the first time in the four and a half billion year history of Earth that it's been possible to extend life beyond it. Ma had a significantly different take in spite of his government's ongoing multi-decade program to establish colonies on the moon and Mars. He said, quote, Every time when I read the news about your interest in outer space, I look at you with great respect. We need heroes like you, but we need more heroes like us, working hard on the Earth, improving things every day. That's what I want. August 29th, 2017. Elon Musk tweeted a book recommendation on this date. He said, quote, Worth reading Life 3.0 by Tegmark. AI will be the best or worst thing ever for humanity, so let's get it right. Tegmark is MIT physics professor Max Tegmark, who was the beneficiary of a $10 million donation in 2015 to fund research aimed at mitigating existential risks facing humanity concerning developments in artificial intelligence. Techmark was also interviewed in the 2018 documentary on artificial intelligence, Do You Trust This Computer?, which was also promoted by Musk on Twitter. Techmark was an elected fellow of the American Physical Society in 2012 for an area of astronomy concerned with the study of the origin and chronology of the universe. He was also awarded the Royal Swedish Academy of Engineering Sciences Gold Medal in 2019 for his contributions again to cosmology but also for identifying the opportunities and risks associated with artificial intelligence. It is in this area where his interests cross over to that of Musk, as well as a connection to the University of Pennsylvania and the fact that both men earned degrees in both economics and physics. Before we get to the current event of the week, we want to see if you enjoy this 49th episode of Blade Tech's Tesla and SpaceX Redux, 
If so, click that like button. Did you agree with our choices or are there other events that were better? Go ahead and share with us by dropping a comment below. And if you have suggestions for an event in the future, we'll take those too. We'll credit events we pick for future videos to those viewers that post them. We hope you have been enjoying our content. Have we earned your subscription to our channel? If yes, and you have not yet taken the opportunity to subscribe, please take a moment to do so now and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss upcoming videos. We want to continue delivering great content to you. You can always unsubscribe and subscribing is free. On August 13th, 2021, Blue Origin filed suit against NASA in federal court, arguing that the agency failed to properly evaluate its proposal for the agency's human landing system, the lunar lander that succeeds the Apollo craft last used in 1972, a procurement won by SpaceX earlier in the year. Blue Origin and Dynetics filed separate protests with the GAO in April, and the Procurement Oversight Agency rejected those protests July 30th. Blue Origin was undaunted by the GAO's decision. The company's August 16th press release concerning the filing stated, quote, The GAO report confirms NASA's desire for multiple awards and confirms that there were significant issues with how NASA conducted this procurement process. We continue to urge NASA to restore competition and immediately award a second provider. Two providers ensure greater safety and mission success, promote competition, and control costs. We stand by our assessment that SpaceX received preferential treatment by conducting exclusive negotiations with them. Blue Origin, interestingly, failed to mention that their bid was several billion dollars higher than that of SpaceX. Links to some of our most recent episodes can be found in the description section below. You can peruse our entire 300 plus video library by looking at our playlists, which conveniently sort videos by subject. We announce all new videos in our microblogging accounts, which are listed below, as well as in the community feed for this channel. Want to know how to navigate our channel content? We refer to RetroTech and Innovation Documentary segments as episodes. Coverage of current events in space exploration, science and technology are labeled as shorts. Space and tech history are documented in an anthology called Milestones, and gameplay recordings can be discovered on the Bladed Tech Gaming Channel in videos called Walkthroughs and Side Missions. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed and Minds page, where we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed, and where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching.